How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we're going over a stock that ARK Invest has been buying. They bought $40 million worth the other day, which was the largest purchase by about two and a half fold compared to any other stock that they bought. It's a stock that is down about 26% from its highs this year, represents a growing industry and is really disruptive in the way that it works. And they've also been able to acquire another company this year which could increase their reach significantly. So we're going to be talking about this. It's already one of their biggest holdings, but it's one that I've never talked about. It's one that a lot of people don't talk about on YouTube. We're going to go through the financials, talk about the company that they acquired, and then talk about whether I think it is a good stock to buy and whether it is down for the count, like what a lot of people are thinking right now with it down about 26% over the last few months, or whether it's going to continue to grow and continue to be disruptive in the industry. So if you guys like this kind of thing, please leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Also, check out the link down below to Weeble. Today is the last day that they're giving away three free stocks. Make sure you check that out because unless they push it back further, this is the last day. They might just go back to one stock. That's typically what they do for a certain amount of time. So definitely check that out. Deposit $100 and get your three free stocks. And then you can go and buy this stock. So definitely check that out. I really appreciate it. So the company that we're looking at today is Teladoc. So you can see here, this is on Lucid Tracking. It tracks the stocks that ARK Invest is buying. They bought about $40 million worth just the other day. This is just one day worth of buy right here. You can see $40 million. You can also see here, it is their number six holding already under their biggest ARK ETF. So you can see here, they already have about $400 million, $430 million of Teladoc. You can see over the last few days, Teladoc has been down, you know, since about late October, it's fallen about 20%. Since their highs, they were about 250. They've fallen down 26%, but on the one year, they're up pretty significantly. And if you don't know what they do, they are the largest telemedicine company in the United States. So they do a lot of different online visits. So you can imagine this has been a really good company to be invested in this year. Now, they also merged with a company called Lavango, which helps people manage their chronic diabetes and other chronic health conditions. So they were a pretty significant player in this industry. They made their merger official just earlier in October and they paid about 18 billion, 18.5 billion worth for this company. They have around 410 members, which is just a very small amount of the total addressable market in the United States with people that have diabetes. So you can see here, they have a very small percentage, just over 1% of the market for people that have diabetes. Now, this is a very interesting company because it's been growing very quickly. So over the last couple quarters, you can see the revenues here very smoothly running up from 138 million to 157 to 181 to 241 to 289. You can see that their net income is kind of all over the place. They're still growing pretty significantly. So they're not yet profitable, but they are growing their revenue significantly. And if we look at their the last quarter report, you can see that they are expecting revenue to go to about 294 to 304 million, which is still a step up from where they are now. And I think that they are underplaying this. So I think the reason that the stock is down now is the fact that we have the vaccine coming out. At least that was what was reported a little bit earlier this month. And, you know, back in August to October, cases started to get better. We started opening up. So I think that's when we were at our high. And then since then, you know, we've gradually opened up and more and more people are going back in person to visit their doctors. However, I will say that this company, I think, is around for the long term. So why do I say that? Well, a lot of people just don't want to have to go in public to doctor's appointments. I mean, it's kind of a pain, right? You have to drive there. You have to wait. You have to fill out paperwork there. And then you have to wait longer. And then it takes a very long time, right? It takes hours to have your doctor's appointment now. And with Teladoc, you could just, you know, sign on, put your computer away, turn on the sound so that you can hear it, and then do whatever you want. So it's a lot more convenient. 
Also, I don't know that we are necessarily out of this pandemic. I mean, please don't get into politics in the comment section below, but my state, Michigan, just shut down again. We have virus cases spiking. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that could happen that could cause this company to shoot back up again. Now, they're giving their forward guidance to stay about the same, but I think this is going to go up, especially with the winter coming and with cold and flu season coming. I think that their revenue is going to be higher than it was last quarter, not lower. Of course, they would know better than I would, but I feel like they're underplaying it a little bit, how much they'll be able to earn so that way they can beat expectations. Just looking at their balance sheet too, because it is important to look at their assets versus liabilities. They have a very nice balance sheet. Just looking at their cash and short-term investments, they have about $1.2 billion, and they only have total current liabilities of about $201 million. So they have a great current ratio of about 6, maybe 5.5 to 6, and that is really good looking forward. I mean, that is not really an issue at all for the short term. So then the question is, is it a good buy? Well, it is pretty expensive, let's be honest. Earlier this year in August, the price to sales ratio was about 25.6, which is really high. Now it's about 15.6, which is lower. But I feel like this is probably a good long-term buy. Again, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. I don't think that they are going to really diminish over time. I think that the people that they're working with already like the service. And I feel like they'll be able to continue to gain market share just for the fact that this makes your life easier, it makes it more simple, it makes it more enjoyable. A lot of people don't like waiting these days. So the fact that they don't have to be in a room with other people that are sick is very beneficial to them. A lot of people would prefer this. I mean, personally, I would love being able to see a doctor like this. Now, I'm not saying that they are going to be a one-size-fits-all. A lot of people like the in-person visits. A lot of people like being able to see the doctor, you know, shake their hand, be able to show them whatever they need to show them in person. They might think that that will give them better care. But I think a lot of people would rather just be able to, you know, pull out their cell phone, pull out their computer, and video conference. So I do not feel like this stock is overvalued right now because I feel like it can easily grow into the future, especially with their recent acquisition. You know, I think they have multiple components to their business. And you can tell that ARC doesn't think that this company is overvalued either for the fact that they're still putting in $40 million and they're building this to a large position in their portfolio. You can see here, this increased their fund weighting by about 0.65%. And they already hold a good amount of them already. So they are willing to put more money into this company. And they're bringing it to a pretty large position in their portfolio. But let me know your thoughts on Teladoc below. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hitting the like and checking out Weeble. Also, if you guys want to see another video, I did one just a few days ago on the four different EV players in China. So definitely check it out here. It's really interesting taking a look at all of them versus each other and kind of comparing which EVs are the best bang for your buck. Thank you guys and I'll see you right here.